Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Church Dogmatics by Emil Brunner, first published in German in 1946. And uh, we have concluded the uh, first half of the Volume 2 on Creation. Now we enter the second half of the Volume 2 on Redemption, and Redemption begins with the Doctrine of Sin. Redemption begins with the doctrine of sin. I'll make a few preliminary preliminary comments before we get started. I remember one of Jürgen Moltmann's many interviews in the United States, and uh, he was asked, uh, what is the greatest need in Christian theology in this postmodern era? And Moltmann didn't even hesitate. He said, there needs to be a rediscovery of the doctrine of sin. In the postmodern era, era, there is no doctrine of sin. We have a, it's a, been left out of the discussion, left out of preaching, teaching, and writing in theology. And uh, because Moltmann is the... Uh, greatest living prophet of our day. He's in his 90s. He's still alive. Uh, his prophetic statement bears truth. We have ignored the doctrine of sin in the postmodern era. And so I think we need to give, uh, all of us need to give special attention to this uh, beginning of redemption in volume two with Bruner's uh, Doctrine of Sin, pages 89 to 99. And again, Bruner does a very good job. I appreciate what he does here. He does an excellent job on the doctrine of sin. And uh, we'll find that uh, many of the principles that he held during the doctrine of creation will be applied with the doctrine of sin as well. So let's go to block one and get started. Okay, block one. Sin is a Christological doctrine. That's the same thing he said about creation. Doctrine is Christological. Revelatory based. Redemption is the central biblical message, along with a doctrine of sin. Sin denotes the self's need of redemption in light of the revelatory witness. So he talks about the sinner before justification. Now, here you go. Here's another one of his principles. We begin with the New Testament witness, not with the fall in Genesis, chapter 3. We posit a Christological understanding of sin as apostasy and rebellion. Apostasy turning from God and rebellion. Sin as apostasy and rebellion. The fall is dealt with in Romans 5, 12 and following. In Romans 5, 12 and following. And we negate, again, Neoplatonic, Neoplatonic rationalism, the idea of sin being equated with the life of the senses. We negate that Platonic idea because it is contrary to the biblical witness. We want to look at sin and the biblical witness. Sin is a turning away from the beginning which God had given. It means to stray and be unfaithful. And Bart's favorite parable is uh, referenced. The parable of the prodigal son describes sin as straying away from our father. Bart's favorite parable. Then, after this straying away from sin, then the scriptures follow up with a prophetic summons to repentance. Metanoia, metanoia, change of mind, change of heart. Metanoia in re, uh, Greek is repentance, and it literally means change of mind. Metanoia, change of mind. So there's a prophetic call for repentance. But uh, Block 2 gives us... Uh, the definition that Bruner wants to posit 
understanding sin as apostasy. Let's go to block two. Sin as apostasy. Psalm 51.4, against thee only have I sinned. Romans 8.7, the carnal mind is enmity against God, not subject to the law of God. Sin is disobedience to God. It is, key, here you go, a change in relationship. Remember, image of God is what? Relational? So sin constitutes a change in relationship. It's a break in communion, emancipation from God, becoming like the prodigal son, a denial of responsibility. Apostasy is a denial of responsibility. In light of our divine destiny revealed in Christ, there is, and I think this is an important concept here, there is an eschatological teleology of sin. In other words, sin begins with a single person, but it can infect the entirety of humanity with sin. It can grow to become an intersubjectivity that infects all of culture. So with apostasy, there is a telos, a teleology of sin. Romans 5.18 not one jot or tittle of the law shall pass away until all is fulfilled. Romans one twenty one. This really describes um, sin. They glorified him. They glorified him not as God, and they were not thankful. Their heart was darkened. That is sin to ignore God, to not live a life of thankfulness for the gift of being created and blessed by God. That is a perfect definition of sin. Romans one twenty one. They glorified him not as God. They were not thankful. Their heart was darkened. Today, what do we see? God is ignored. People are not living a thankful life toward God. There's no thankfulness. And the telos of sin can become an entire infecting of a society. Society can even become a demonic kingdom of evil. And uh, all we got to do is look at Bart and uh, Nazi Germany. Remember, Bart wrote and uh, lived a Christian life in protest against Nazi Germany. Now, the scriptures call this a solidarity of sin. But the, the, the key point here is that that life of ignoring God and not living a life thankfully for what God has given us, that can infect an entire society. And because the postmodern era doesn't believe in transcendence, because the postmodern era doesn't begin, uh, believe in a realm of spirit, and they do not believe, and the postmodern era does not believe in absolute truth, then transcendence gets replaced with what? Intersubjectivity. What do we have today? There's a morality, ethics is based on. Purely intersubjectivity, and it has infected the entire culture. And there's no attention given to the doctrine of sin, as uh, Moltmann criticized. So we get a great understanding that uh, just like the doctrine of creation, Bruner tells us. The doctrine of sin is a Christological doctrine. We will define it by looking at Christ. And it is a turning away from God. It is apostasy, turning from God. And Bruner loves Romans chapter 1, doesn't he? And he goes to Romans 121 to define sin. 
They glorified him not as God. They were not thankful. Their heart was darkened. That is the uh, definition referenced by Brunner right after that uh, Romans 1.20, his favorite verse. He goes to Romans 1.21. So now we take a look at uh, that teleology of sin that has infected the entire society in block three. The teleology of sin and the teleology of koinonia fellowship. Romans 5.12 By one man sin entered the world and death by sin and death passed upon all men. Paul went back to the fall to show that Christ is the Redeemer. In Adam all have sinned. In Christ all are redeemed. We are both individual and we are a part of the larger humanity. We share in a solidarity in sin. We share in a humanity based on the Word of God as well. Through Christ's redemption we are destined for what? Divine koinonia fellowship within the kingdom of God. This is the divine teleology, which is uh, realized only in Christ as the beginning, the meaning, and the end of that divine teleology. So teleology is both personal and universal. We are a descendant of Adam. We are a descendant of our ancestors and we are a new creation of God. We learned that in previous lessons on the doctrine of creation. We are a descendant of Adam. We are also a new creation of God and with new possibilities in Christ. And that's the key. Redemption is in Christ. The possibility of metanoia, repentance, we discover to be in Christ. Salvation is uh, acquired by gathering at the foot of the cross while understanding the cross through the resurrection. Again, cross and resurrection are always considered together in a pure dialectical relationship. But what we learn and what we have to learn is that uh, the doctrine of sin has been ignored in the postmodern era. We don't preach on a doctrine of sin. We don't teach on a doctrine of sin. We don't write. Theologians aren't writing books on the doctrine of sin. And uh, hopefully they are addressing it in the seminaries. But Moltmann said it's being ignored. In the postmodern era, era, the doctrine of sin is being ignored. The postmodern movement began in France when they, the philosophers were rereading and rewriting Hegel and totally rejecting Hegel on objective spirit. They said there is no objective spirit and they would only accept Hegel's teaching on subjective spirit, entirely 100% subjective spirit. And that's what we have today. We have, uh, instead of a belief in transcendence, instead of a belief in absolute truth, we have a belief in intersubjectivity. Uh, the culture determines truth. Intersubjectivity has replaced divine transcendence. We ignore God and we don't live a thankful life toward what God has given us. We have become what Romans 1.21 says. They glorified him not as God. They were not thankful. Their heart was darkened. That is our current postmodern era. That is our current postmodern society. What is needed giving attention to this doctrine of sin. And that's going to get us started. The next lesson we'll pick up on uh, part two of the doctrine of sin. It's going to be pages 100 to 112. The chapter concludes on 112. So 100 to 112 next time. But this gives us a great look at uh, the doctrine of sin as a Christological doctrine, the understanding of sin as apostasy, turning from God, 
referenced in Romans 1.21, and the teleology of sin that needs to be overcome by the teleology of fellowship in Christ. That'll wrap up 89 to 99, and we will conclude chapter 3 in our next lesson. <laughs>